get more results for your walking efforts? Don't fall for these myths. My name is Karen, and on this channel, I'm here to help you be unstoppable through the ups and downs of body love. Honestly, this was a really fun topic to research. There's myths to everything. So let's go through 13 false facts about walking that people actually might believe. Walking backwards burns more calories than walking frontwards. Okay, well, that's interesting. It's the same amount of steps going frontwards as it is backwards. Some believe that walking backward uh, might burn more calories than walking forward, but in reality, the calorie burn is the same in either direction. What does happen when you walk backwards is that you are stimulating and strengthening opposing muscle groups. It's something that we don't do very often, but if, say, you play sports or you have children or maybe you know that you might see a wild animal on the trail, it's a really great idea to practice walking backwards and practice walking backwards fast in case you might need it. Walking is for beginners or people that can't run. Walking can be really hard. If you want to boost, pick up your pace or find some hills. That is definitely not a beginner workout. Running is not necessarily better. I mean, running does burn more card cardiovascular calories. But if you are looking to have weight loss, walking is a better tool because you're able to stay more easily in zone two. Walking makes you taller. In my whole 25 years of walking, I started when I was 25. I did not get one inch taller. Now, what it does do is it does help you hold your posture better, especially if you learn to walk with your palms down and facing forward. It automatically brings a, your body into a better posture. But in reality, your height is primarily determined by genetics and not influenced significantly by walking. So we can just sit down and continue our conversation. Walking only counts if it's a continuous 30 minutes. This is false. Shorter, more frequent can actually be just as beneficial, especially when it comes to walking. So many people have a successful walking plan by splitting it up 10 minutes at a time, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you do end up usually going a little bit longer than 10 minutes, so you do get a little bit more steps, but it is better to move more frequently through the day than to clump it all in one session and then sit for the rest of the day. Your body gets more active recovery. What's really key is picking something and doing something that you can consistently stay with. So if that means shorter durations, that's way better than trying to plan out a one or two hour walk every single day that you end up not being able to have enough time to clump all that time together. Walking faster always means burning more fat. And that's false. Walking at an extremely fast pace doesn't necessarily mean that you're burning more fat. If you are tapping into your aerobic zone, it's strengthening your heart and probably just burning more calories. Walking in cold weather burns more calories. This is actually one that I believed. Let's talk about this for a second. Some believe that walking in cold weather burns more calories because the body has to work harder to stay warm. I've been quoted saying that. There is a little bit of truth to this. It's not a significant calorie burning factor, but I have personally noted the difference that it does increase the intensity recorded in my heart rate monitor when it is colder versus when it is warmer. I don't know. Sometimes it's like mind over matter, you know, like if, if you feel like you're burning more fat, that mindset shift might trigger a little bit more visualization and manifestation because if you believe it, it comes to be. I'll let you decide on that one. But I, I do know for a fact, though, that walking in cold weather really helps your skin as long as you're not like in like really cold weather that's, you know, getting you to frostbite. But it coldness at minus three degrees helps to actually stimulate new cell 
renewal on the skin. I, I learned that when I was a cosmetician. They actually created a skin cream that takes the temperature down by a few degrees so that the cell turnover was quicker and it would have an exfoliation effect. So I was always asked, you know, how do you keep your skin so nice? And I think one of the reasons has always been that I'm always outside all year round when it's cold, when it's warm. And I, I feel like that it's, you know, it's all connected. I know that's going down a rabbit hole, but we wouldn't be on one of my videos if we didn't go down a rabbit hole at least once. Moving right along. This is an interesting one. Another one about walking backwards. Walking backwards improves memory. Now, this is false completely. There's a misconception that walking backwards enhances memory. Well, physical activity can benefit cognitive function. The direction of walking isn't a key fa factor in memory improvement. So if you decide to walk backwards to strengthen your muscles, maybe it's a really good time to recite lines. I mean, you wouldn't know either way if it's, if it's a myth, you know, like if you're anything like me and you're rehearsing for your next show, you, you know, you rehearse any time you want. So it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your belly. You know, if you can do that, you can get your brain to do more, the more you can get your brain to do while you're doing it. But anyways, I digress. Walking only counts in nature. Okay, well, some do believe that you only get the health benefits of walking when you do go out in nature, but I agree and I disagree. Like, I am definitely a big nature fan. I think it's really great for the brain health and mental health to get out of your current environment and bring yourself into a new environment so that you can actually just think of other things other than work and stress and you know, you can just like really let go and, and tune in internally. And I feel like walking out in nature really helps me do that. But when it comes to a physical aspect, walking in urban areas, like where there's cars, you know, and, and, and stuff, you're still outside and, and walking on a treadmill inside still provides valuable exercise and health benefits. I believe the key is really allowing yourself to be rather than multitask. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. Walking 10,000 steps is a universal health standard. Okay, so this is false. The number of steps is based on individual factors, age, fitness level, and health goals. So you got to think about like what you're doing for the rest of your days. Yeah, so if you have an office job, it's probably a good idea to shoot for at least 7,000 steps a day just to get that extra movement. But if you have a job like a fitness instructor, I remember days when I, would, when I was teaching fitness and some of the classes that I taught did not actually take a lot of steps. So sometimes I would have walked my dog and taught a class and only registered that I had done about 6,000 steps. So there's my Fitbit saying, walk more, walk more. I did this other exercise and you're telling me I'm lazy. Well, that's not really giving yourself a really good mindset. If you're looking at increasing your steps, my recommendation is to increase them at about 3,000 at a time. So if you're walking 3,000 steps right now a day, increase your step count to six or 7,000. And then when you feel like maybe you can go a little bit more, add that gradually in. It could just lead to another one of those health addictions like counting every morsel or of your food or like getting on the scale every single day. Or, you know, it's, it's just, it's something that can actually backfire on you. Here's another one I like. Walking uphill automatically tones the butt. Well, okay, so walking uphill, it does engage the butt muscle, but you you have to you have to remind yourself that you are engaging the butt muscles. Saying that walking uphill it automatically tones and shapes the butt is an oversimplification. Specific strength training exercises to target the butt is way more effective. And especially if you have a sedentary job, 
if those glutes aren't firing up, it's going to show in different areas. Your calves will be on pain. And then other things start to go like your hip flexors. So it's about taking care of the entire body and not overdoing one thing. This is a really funny one. Walking in circles improves creativity. I'm going to start walking in circles. Physical activity can stimulate uh, creative thinking. I'm a huge believer of this. But the direction of walking is unlikely to have significant impact on creative process. Now, there is one way, like you could say that it is, it is walking in circles, and that's when you're spinning. It's, it's part of an exercise to do in the morning to calibrate your nervous system. You bring your arms out and you spin 21 times. That could be walking in circles. It does activate different areas of the brain. So that could be where that idea comes from. And I, I don't necessarily, like I'm kind of on the fence about this. I kind of believe it. But I do know for 100% certain fact that if you walk, creativity really just flows. It's, it's just kind of like it goes hand in hand. So I do believe that it improves creativity. If it's, this has been interesting or fun or you just like hanging out, make sure you hit like and follow me more for wellness videos just like this one. But the most surprising ones to me that I found the most surprising are coming right up. This one really surprised me. Walking on an empty stomach burns more fat. There's no real research or data that proves that this is true. And if you can prove that it is true, or if you have some sort of study, let me know where to find that. But I believed it for years. I mean, I would always go out on an empty stomach because I thought it burnt more fat. You know, like when you work out fasted, apparently I've always learned it burnt more fat, but I really don't know where I got that from. Like, you know, when you start you hear something and then somebody says it and the next person says it and the next person says it and then all of a sudden it's a thing and then everybody's saying it. So that one really, really surprised me. The one that I feel very strongly about that I feel like is a myth is that walking is great for multitasking. Now, I disagree. I, like if you're using walking as an extra tool. If you're using it as your weight loss tool or your actual exercise block, it should not go in the order of multitasking. Now, if you're going for a walk on, over and above that and you want to like scroll on your phone or listen to music, yes. But I 100% agree that you should go for a walk completely unplugged in silence for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day and see what comes up. It's the only way that you'll actually be able to let go of what everybody else is saying. So you, you think about it, okay? You can really tap into your own voice, your own self-awareness, if you don't have anything in your ears telling you how to form your opinion. So songs do that, podcasts do that, audiobooks do that. Talking to a friend does that. Silence is the key. And that means nothing coming in your head except for your own thoughts. And then you pair that up with a super powerful thing like walking. And you'll never want to multitask again once you get the hang of it. I mean, at first, you might, you might be bored. You might not know what to do with yourself. But I, I went through all of the benefits of walking and silence in this video right here. And it's kind of becomes like a no brainer. So now that you know all the, the 13 things, I found 13 because 13 is a fun number. And now that you know the myths that some people believe, you might be wondering what exactly would a doable, fun walking plan look like. So I'll link up the video where I explain my weekly walking routine. And don't forget to follow me here to be unstoppable between the ups and downs of your health journey. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.